and we read, Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my manager is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager, because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, Make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you who are faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Our Gospel reading for today is a little bit strange, isn't it? A manager is caught by his boss pilfering funds. And the manager thinks to himself, "Uh uh-oh, what do I do now? I'm too weak to dig ditches, and I'm too proud to beg, so what do I do? And then he came up with a plan, a brilliant idea, a shrewd plan. He goes to all the people who owe his boss money, and he lowers their bills. Some by 20%, some by even as much as 50%. It's your lucky day. Talk about your blue light specials. These guys experienced exactly that. And this crooked manager endears himself to these people so that now they owe him one. And he plans on collecting on what they owe him later on. This plan was the manager's version of Social Social Security, his own personal IRA, and his personal pension program all rolled into one. He was a shrewd fellow. Now here's the strange part. When the boss discovers what this manager has done, the boss praises his manager for being so shrewd. Never mind the fact that this manager had cost him lots of money. He admires his shrewdness. He admires his cleverness. Don't you find that a bit strange? I do. Especially if I'm one of the victims. I think you and I, though, are a people and a part of society who value clever and shrewd people. I mean, we hear of somebody coming up with a shrewd or clever idea, and we oftentimes at least think to ourselves, hmm, I wish I'd thought of that. The prophet Amos tells the story of shrewd people who were grain buyers. A farmer would bring his grain to the market. He knew he had 100 bushels a week. But when they put it on the scale, the scale said 90. 
The only recourse the farmer had was to go to one of the judges in the marketplace and ask him to check the scale, make sure it was accurate. And of course the judge would dutifully do that. And then he'd look at the farmer and say, it's right on. And what recourse did the farmer have? Well, he didn't want to take his grain back home, so he took the loss. And then as the farmer is walking away, of course, the grain buyer slipped the judge his fair share of the profits. Probably happens every day in our world. But it's shrewd, isn't it? It's clever. And we can admire it as long as we're not the victims. When we remember the tragic events of 9-11, one of the things that was so obvious and clear was that the terrorists were very well organized and very clever and very shrewd in carrying out their mission of evil. And shrewdness, like anything else, can be used for great evil and it can also be used for great good. The message of our lessons for today is that God is not impressed with our shrewdness, especially when we use our shrewdness to serve our own ends. God himself, you see, has pulled off the most shrewd and the most brilliant and the most clever act in all of human history. And God did that for good. God did that for you and for me. God told Satan, do whatever you want with my son. And Satan did exactly that. Satan worked in people's lives to stir them up to hatred and stir them up to violence. And then Satan got them to kill him, kill Jesus and put him on a cross. Satan thought he had won. But on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. And in effect, God said, you could kill my son, but you cannot kill my love for you. Pretty shrewd of God. Pretty shrewd for the good of you and me and for the good of all humanity. And yet, God is not impressed with our shrewdness or our cleverness. The really good news is that you and I don't have to be shrewd. You and I don't have to be clever. We don't have to play that game. The really good news is that God is pleased with our straightforward, nothing to hide faith. God is really pleased when we deal openly and honestly with God. That's why we confess our sin every Sunday morning. And God is pleased when you and I deal honestly and openly with each other. God is even pleased when we follow the advice of Paul. When we engage in supplications and prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings for all people, including our enemies. I'm reminded of the scene in Fiddler on the Roof where the village rabbi is asked, is there a blessing for the tyrannical czar? And the rabbi thinks for a moment, and then he says, yes, there is. It goes like this. May God bless and keep the czar far, far away. <laughs> I thought we were an outdoor for a moment there. At the outdoor service, when I tell a good joke, the people like to honk their horn. <laughs> well, today is Rally Sunday. It's a day when you and I rally around the cross of Jesus Christ. Because through the cross, God is straightforward and open with us. He's honest with us. God's love for us is not far, far away. In fact, it is among us, and it is even within us. We can be grateful to God that God is not shrewd with us, just open and honest. Open to say, I love you, and that's that. 
Nothing can change it. Amen.